Happy Easter, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest has been on the show before, and he's come back today, Easter Sunday, to make some amazing raw vegan food for Easter, including the best vegan cheesy potatoes. And he also has a really exciting announcement. If you want to get like a lot of amazing low-fat raw vegan recipes, some, like $1,600 worth. He has created the, the most incredible bundle of product that I've ever seen. And he's going to tell you about that as well. So please welcome back to the show, Chef Chris Kendall. Good to see you again. So excited to be here. Thanks so much, Chef AJ. Absolutely delighted to be back. It was so much fun the last time. And I'm stoked to be here for Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Yeah, I, yeah, and you are so creative. Just raw food chefs in general, so creative. I just admire the creativity that goes into creating raw food. You, you got to be, right? I mean, you got to be. You don't want to just be eating celery sticks and bananas. I mean, that's fine some of the time. I've done it a bunch, but it's really fun. And I love this so much. I feel so good doing it. I want to invite people in. So that really led me to being more and more creative and creating dishes that other people would really like salivate to have, right? And want to have at a potluck or a family gathering. So that's why I made this one too, you know, like a spring holiday feast meal. Yeah, I think it's funny when you mentioned ban uh, bananas and celery sticks, because I remember I went to the Living Light Culinary Art Institute and is a raw vegan culinary school. And when they were teaching us about banana ice cream, which, you know, everybody gets their mind blown when they have banana ice cream for the first time. So they actually gave us celery stalks as our spoons because they said, you know, this is a lot of sugar. So so we would eat it with pieces of celery. It's so perfect. I mean, celery does go great with bananas or dates. When I'm traveling on airplanes, I just take dates, like break them in half. I squish them on celery sticks and it's like the simplest thing that is really sweet and savory packs well doesn't go bad and it's super light and you can carry it on but yeah celery is pretty darn amazing bananas are amazing but you know let's face it a lot of the times most of us want more than that right so whether it's feasts like this or whether it's raw vegan pizzas or you know a whole bunch of things curries burgers noodles almost anything you can imagine i love to bring it to share it yeah. Where did you get this great idea for the raw vegan bundle? Because when you first asked me, I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know. And why would anybody want all those raw recipes? But then when I looked at it, there was one book and the, he's going to be on our show tomorrow. Nate Maris. It's a book. Let, yes. let me pull it. It's called The Inside Scoop, Mastering the Art of Small Batch and Ice Cream. That book sells for $42.99 on Amazon. So for $6 more, you get, I don't know, like 50 books. And that, that book, anybody would I love that book because it's so beautifully photographed and the recipes are so easy and it's just fruit as he's made ice cream, all these ice creams out of fruit. Yeah. It's like, I think like 45 or 55 or 65 different ice creams. It's ridiculous. Nate and his uh, wife, Melissa, they're both super amazing. And like you said, like there's actually 67 books in this bundle. So it's pretty absurd. And it, it actually spans between books, online courses, and more guides. I have my 21 day spring meal plan. So there's a whole bunch of meal plans and it, it ranges from really simple, kind of like we're talking about, like really fruit and vegetable based dishes that are super simple, low fat, to kind of low fat raw gourmet to some higher moderate fat raw gourmet. And it, it tries to touch everything, but it even has courses on like EFT and it has, you know, your unreleased interviews from the 2019 weight loss summit. And there's, there's a real good spread of different material there that can really help anyone. So, you know, with the bundle itself, Lissa Rockwood Romance, who's uh, Nate's wife, we had both been a part of various plant-based bundles last year and coming just into this year in January. And we really, really had a lot of fun and connected with a ton of people and, you know, everyone who bought the bundle was so happy. And both of us had the same thought at the same time that, you know what, it's only a matter of time until there's going to be a raw vegan bundle. And we both were like saying like, I wish I could. And then we're like together, let's do it. You know, because we figured why not keep it in the raw family? Let's bring it together, bring it out there and connect every single person that we know. Cause you know, I've been in the game for over 17 years now. Uh, Melissa has been in there for almost seven now. And we've traveled the world going to raw food festivals and, helping other people to thrive on this lifestyle. Um, so we've met tons of people and we just wanted to bring everyone together and light a little fire. You know, there's not too often you want to light a fire under raw foodists, but we figured we would to get people popping with their own creativity because in this bundle, we actually have about 85% of the people bringing in new books that they've never released anywhere before. So it's a lot of brand new material, thousands of recipes and just so many beautiful pictures and support and information. So 
that's, that's really how it came into being. We just, we did other bundles and we decided we need to make a raw vegan bundle to really support the raw food community and see it grow from within. So. Yeah, and even if somebody's not raw, you need to eat more raw fruits and vegetables. That's just for everybody. So that's what I think is so yeah. cool about it. it. It doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a dinosaur or you're a woolly, woolly mammoth or if you're a, you know, really everyone eats some raw food. You know, Dr. Doug Graham, he often says that everyone's a raw foodist. Just some people tend to eat some cooked food, you know, and I think that's really, really true. It's just like all the other animals out there. And I think eating a plant-based diet that has raw and cooked food is amazing. I'm just an incredible advocate for a raw food based or all raw diet if it draws you in. And I, I found myself here and I can't go back because I just feel so much better. So that's what leads me to wanting to share all these options that helps people in those holiday times, in those stress times, or in those nostalgic times. Does the raw food community, you guys basically all know each other because it, it is smaller than, let's say, the vegan community. Yeah, it is, it is a smaller bubble for sure. And most of us do know each other, especially, you know, throughout all the festivals and stuff like that. Uh, or like almost all kind of areas, there are a little bit of different subgroups and stuff like that. And some people kind of mesh together a little more, or at least run in the same circles a little more, so know each other a little bit better. Uh, but by and large, you know, I mean, it, it's still a small but growing community, especially over the last 10 some odd years that lots and lots of fruit festivals have come up here uh, worldwide. That's so cool. So we, it's funny, we had an earlier show, a cooked SOS free vegan show and Chef Bravo made boulangerie or boulangere potato. So you're going to do something that's similar to a scalloped potato. Yeah, absolutely. This is a scalloped potato and it is potato-less. Um, but it is nice and creamy and cheesy and it's filling. And, you know, it's also we're going to have a, a lemon garlic asparagus that really tastes authentic, like they're, you know, sauteed asparagi, right? Asparagi. And uh, then we're also going to have like a, a red Russian kind of coleslaw. This kind of like that cooked cabbage kind of coleslaw, sweet and a little bit sour. So it's, a, it's kind of a nice little Easter feast. And it's funny because, you know, I grew up in Saskatchewan in Canada. And most of the big feasts were always like turkey and stuffing, but I never liked turkey or stuffing, like even when I was a little kid. So I liked the sides and I always loved the scalloped potatoes and I always loved like the, the sauerkrauts and coleslaws and all that stuff. Can't honestly say that I love the asparagus a lot, but now I really do love the asparagus and these really match together. And it comes from my spring meal plan. So that's why it's also kind of spring-ish ingredients that you can get within your hemisphere to perk it up. It's kind of the holiday feast meal at the end of the book at the end of the three weeks raw nice do we need any special equipment well you do need a well yeah you do you need a dehydrator for it to be more authentic at least in terms of the texture and to just kind of look a little bit more authentic you could make it without but it is definitely better with a dehydrator uh, you need a freezer which is kind of unique and i'll let you know about that it's good to have a high power blender whether that's a blend tech or Vitamix or even something smaller and really powerful like a magic bullet works really really well uh, cutting board good quality knife and uh, a peeler a juicer and funny enough I do have a scale because sometimes sometimes I like to weigh things out to make them really kind of precise right but that's not super necessary otherwise I think that's pretty much it you know some bowls and cutlery and plates Great. I can't wait to see the recipe. And because uh, are you using actual potatoes? I'm not actually using re real potatoes, but it is potato like. And trust me, I know a lot of people might hear and go, oh, gosh. But when it's covered in that creamy sauce and dehydrated, so it softens up and comes into more of a kind of softish texture, we're using zucchini. That's the main part of the potato, but it's not all that. We're also going to be using mushroom caps. And I'll show you a little technique on using that. Uh, and then the sauce, we have a smattering of stuff here that I'll go into. And I want to encourage everyone here to grab a pen and paper uh, so you can write down these recipes. And like we said, too, this is in my book. And this bundle is such a great deal. Honestly, I almost feel like it's a gift. But we have to put a price tag on it to make sure that everyone gets compensated. And I believe there's going to be a link down below that you can click and check that out if you want to see all the different books we have so many people, you know, some of the best known chefs in the world, best known raw food chefs and educators. So it's, it's a mix between recipes and education. So write her down and get ready to check it out and see if you want to get the whole smattering. Hey, have you ever heard of Chef Ito? Yeah, I have. Um, didn't he, uh, is it Ito, is he deaf? 
He's not deaf. He just chooses not to talk. He, he, I don't know if he's still a chef, but he was a chef at Olak. Yes, I've heard about it. And, you know, it's funny because from many, many people, I used to live in L.A. And, uh, you know, I heard because he's in the Carlsbad area, or at least that's where it was. And I've heard from many raw chefs that he was like the best raw chef. That's what I've heard a lot of people say. He went to Living Life the year before me, and he he really his he was really so creative and so incredible, especially his desserts, his cheesecakes. Yeah, I miss him. I've never I've never gotten a chance to eat his food. You know, the first raw food restaurant I went to was like after I was like six or seven years raw in Toronto, and then when I went to Los Angeles, I went to uh, uh, Julie uh, Giuliano's. Giuliano's yeah. yep, in Santa Monica. Yeah. yeah, I went there, and then I went to Kind Cream, and I went to like another kind of like sun something cafe and a couple places in Santa Monica. And, and then I went to some in New York since then, you know, but it's really amazing what you can do in the range of flavors and textures. You can really recreate anything, but at the same time, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. You can make things super, super simple. And, you know, if you really sit satisfied and have a lot of fun and feel really great, so it's, it's all what you really want. Right. There used to be a really fancy restaurant, raw restaurant in Larkspur called Roxanne's. I haven't been to that one. Where is that? What city? Well, it was in Larkspur. It closed, but she was really creative. She wrote a raw cookbook with Charlie Trotter. She was really like if her just. It was just so beautiful. Everything she made. It can be a little bit harder for uh, like solely raw food restaurants to really, really do it. You know, there are some, but a lot of them in the either needing to put on some cooked foods or otherwise they kind of go ghost eventually. You know, that's at least what I've seen. But yeah, that, that's what Sun Cafe did in Studio City. You know, you, you got to do what you got to do to stay open. Yeah, which is great, right? Because that way it, it draws in more people and you bring people in that don't feel great to try raw dishes and then they, they try some of their friends. And I think it's just a good thing. You know, like I said, I, you know, I'm a raw foodist, but I, I embrace all of it. And I think that cooked, cooked vegan food can be healthful as well. Great. Well, on with the recipe. All right. So let's get into it. So. It's kind of funny because there are a few things that we would actually be starting the day before. So this won't be for your Easter right now, at least not in the full kind of soft texture that I really want to showcase and bring to you guys. But we're going to start first, not necessarily in the direction that I would normally, but because I'm doing this demo uh, with some stuff pre-made, I'm going to do it in this order. So what we're going to actually start with is the, uh, the coleslaw. So what we have here is just... 115 grams or about 0.25 pounds of fresh red cabbage. And now it's really important that the cabbage is fresh and you want it to be crispy and high water content. And the reason for that is we're going to take this cabbage. So this is just 115 grams. We're going to take our knife and just slice it down. You could also use a mandolin. I'm not a huge fan of mandolins. They kind of freak me out. I've seen too many accidents in kitchens that I've uh, managed but we're just gonna carefully slice it into really thin kind of noodles. And then we're gonna freeze it. And by freezing it, when it's nice and high water content and fresh and juicy, it's actually gonna cause the water in the cabbage to expand and rupture the cell wall so that when we thaw it out, it turns into the most beautiful texture ever. Like it's like, it just tastes and feels and looks like cooked cabbage and whether you're making a coleslaw or whether you're making a pad thai or whether you're making any number of dishes, it's just such a great way to add in some cabbage. It also mellows up the flavor a little bit, kind of the same way that cooked cabbage does that, right? So I'm just gonna, the one thing I did forget was a bowl for this. I'm gonna grab a bowl. And all I do is put that into a Tupperware or if I don't have a Tupperware that fits, I would, uh, just put it into a little baggie and throw that in the freezer. And the next day, a little bit tight over here. Did try and open up that door before I did this. There we go. So just putting that in there. The next day we would take that out in the morning and just put it in like a, in like a sieve or like a little a thing like this. If you want, you can put a bowl under it to catch any drips because since the, the cell wall rupture, some of the liquid is going to lick leak out. And I like my coleslaw to be thick rather than kind of runny. So I just have it in this sieve like this, and this is already thawed. 
and we're just going to put that into this nice little bowl. And I don't know if you can see this. I need to get a little bit closer here, but it just looks like oh, where are we? It's just really, really soft and like wet and. It's seriously, it tastes like cooked cabbage. It's really nice. I actually use the same kind of technique when I'm making cabbage rolls with the whole leaf, so you can make really soft wraps for your cabbage rolls. Uh, I do it also in a raw borscht to have some shredded cabbage in the borscht or different soups. Really fun, great technique. So we're going to leave that aside here for now, and we're going to make the sauce for that actually last. We're going to now take the asparagus and... You want also your asparagus to be really nice and fresh, right? So we have the asparagus here and we're just gonna bend it. You can tell it's fresh when you bend it and it just breaks. This bottom part, I'm gonna put aside and I could use that in a broth or I could use it in a different dish, but the top part is the most tender and that's what we're gonna be using the recipe. So just breaking this, I just wanted to do a little food demo of doing that, but I would have done this yesterday and then just put these asparagus directly into the freezer to freeze overnight. You want it to freeze at least six hours. Overnight is good. And like I said, you want it to be nice, fresh asparagus because if it's not, if it's shriveled and kind of dehydrated, it's not gonna change the texture in the way that you really want it, right? So we have that asparagus and we're gonna make a dressing, which is a lemon garlic dressing for the asparagus. And what I'm gonna do here is take two tablespoons of lemon juice, which is about one lemon. I'm gonna put that in here. This is a new, new tool that I've never used before. So I'm really hoping that it works good because I normally actually use the magic bullet for this since it's a, such a small amount, but the uh, magic bullet broke yesterday and we didn't have time to get a new one. So I'm experimenting with this, this guy and I really hope it works. So two tablespoons of lemon juice. And just so you know, that was 250 grams of asparagus, which is very typical for when you go to a store and just get a bundle of asparagus. It's just one bundle of asparagus. So we have that two tablespoons of juice. We have two tablespoons of hemp seeds. And, oh, you know what? I way overdid that. That's actually supposed to be two teaspoons. So two teaspoons of hemp seeds. So this is gonna be double creamy and that's fine with me. Actually, it's going to be four times as creamy. Excuse me. And we have one clove of garlic. Just going to press that down and throw that in there as well. I might actually, just to make sure for uniformity, try and scoop out some of these hemp seeds because I don't want to be totally embarrassed and red-faced the whole time here. Going, oh my God, I can't believe I bluttered that badly. All right, that's probably closer. So make sure the skin's off of here of this one clove of garlic. And then we have 10 grams of onion. So it's just a little teeny piece of yellow onion. Otherwise you could use about two of the white parts of green onions, like two little balls of green onion. So we're just gonna put that in there as well. And We're gonna pulse that up. So can you see me over here? Yeah, you still can, that's good. So we're gonna pulse this up and we're gonna all collectively hope that this little device works really well. So let's try this out. It looks like this. See how that looks. I think that looks pretty darn good. So you just want it to be nice and creamy. It's got a little bit of savoriness to it. It's got a little bit of a uh, little bit of saltiness, a little bit of savory, a little bit of sourness to it. And we're just going to take a little teeny container here. And I just grabbed the asparagus. Let's hope that that fits. It doesn't. So what we'll do is put it in here. I just took this asparagus out from the freezer. So this was stuff that I actually had put in there last night. And because we broke off the tips, it's a little bit shy of the 250, probably closer to about 180 grams. And we want it to actually still be frozen. 
So the reason that that's actually going to make the sauce stick to it even more. So we're just going to take this sauce. We're going to pour it over top of the asparagus. And if we need to, we'll take a spatula, which I have ready, and make sure we get all of that out into the asparagus. And then you can just kind of spread it on the asparagus and mix them around and try and get that sauce all over. Make sure it's on the tips. Make sure it's all over the place. Make sure every single one gets a little bit. There we go. And then all we're gonna do is take an Excalibur dehydrator tray with a Teplex sheet or otherwise the uh, other newer version that they have and place those on there in a single row with the stem ends closest to one side. If you put it the other side, it's probably not going to be the end of the world. That's just the way I like to do it because I like to get the, uh, the nice florette kind of top part a little bit more a little bit less dehydrated, a little less dry. So any little bits that's not quite uh, in there that's still inside this dish, I'm gonna spread those on the tips of these. And again, because the asparagus are still cold, this sauce is just sticking to the asparagus, which is really nice and makes it even better when you do the next step. So that's really simple, that's ready. These recipes are actually pretty darn quick once you uh, figure them out. It's really just the putting them into a hydrant and waiting. So there we have it. That's the, the lemon garlic asparagus. Um, and we're just going to pop these into the hydrator at 118. And they can go in there from about 45 minutes to two hours, really whatever. I, I normally do it for about an hour and a half. But this is what I would do first so that I can put them in and then start making the other stuff. Actually. Sorry, I'm lying. Normally, I'd actually put the uh, scalloped potatoes in first because they take two hours. And because this takes an hour, once I'm done making that, I would make these and put that in after. But because I already have some uh, scalloped potatoes in the dehydrator from an hour ago, I'm doing it in the reverse order. So I'm going to put these inside here. And even though they're frozen, it won't take too long for the dehydrator to soften them up and warm them up nice and kind of create a little bit of a drier coating from that, that uh, creamy sauce on top. All right, so we got those ready. And let's see, what do we want to do next? Well, I'd say actually, you know, we're going to make the slaw since we're here and we have that, uh, that already. So what we're going to do is just rinse this out as well. I really do find for this size of a portion that I have, it's really to serve one to two people that a magic bullet or a smaller kind of blending device like this works a lot better. Uh, but, but you could, if you're going to make a larger quantity of it, you could make it in the Vitamix. It's just going to be hard to make this small of amount of of quantity in the vitamins. All right, so for this second dish, for the slaw, all we're gonna do is take two really nice soft dates. And if you don't have uh, really soft dates like these, if you just have medjool dates that maybe are a little bit harder, you're gonna probably wanna soak them in some water. But this is about 30 grams of date. Put that in there. Make sure you pit them. Nothing worse than having pits in your sauce. And we have one tablespoon of lemon juice. So super, super simple, just sweet and salty kind of dish here. I'm going to put this blender cap back on and do the exact same thing. Hopefully this will work for me. So for this 
one, it worked all right, but the magic bullet definitely would have worked even better. But all we're going to do, you can actually see, it's just kind of a thin, kind of almost like a jam. So we're just going to place that inside there. And because the cabbage is kind of like a, a strong, bitter flavor, you know, like bitter, savory, kind of more intense flavor, the slightly tangy, sweet sauce just really mixes well and marries together and brings about just an awesome, awesome flavor that is kind of like that uh, nice cream where it's like, what, bananas, that's it? Like, this is just three ingredients, but it actually tastes amazing and I'm not going to say you want to have like a whole plate of it yourself, but that's why it's just a little side dish with 115 grams of the fresh red cabbage. And it really complements the other dishes. That's what I always like to try and do is if I'm making multiple courses, I like each of them to have their own kind of predominant flavor that really combines well and complements the other ones, right? So we have this nice and mixed up. And we can just put that on the side. So that's actually totally ready. The asparagus is all in there. It's warming up. It's going to be ready in the next anywhere from 45 plus minutes. And now we're going to get into the main course, which of course is those cheesy potatoes. Oh, wow, that is really, really tasty. How do you think up these recipes? You know, I've always been kind of creative in the kitchen. And as soon as I just start thinking about a dish, it just kind of pops in my head, at least a version. Then I try it, I play with it. And usually within one or two times of making it, I can kind of tweak and figure it out to make it the balance of flavor I want. Just because I've made so many things, you know, like I'm 40 now and when I was 16, I was really making uh, food for friends and making my own food for myself a lot. I moved out at 17 and was making my, making the food for the friends and we road trip or just at home. And so I have just been somewhat intuitive with it and uh, it's just been a natural disposition that I just love doing. And really once you get the hang, one of the things, like I have a book called Naturally Raw Some Sauces and the whole concept of it is to teach you how to become a sauce chef and how to balance flavors and how to create different textures and how the palate works and really how to flavor pair and match and all that kind of stuff. And once you get that, it becomes really darn easy because you think of a sauce and you go, okay, well, what's the predominant flavor? Okay, what are the accents? Like, what's the texture there? And when you have a plethora of raw ingredients that are substitutes for the ones right in the, in the directions or in the ingredient list of any sauce you can think of, automatically my mind just replaces them. And I go, okay, well, it's just playing with ratios, right? So any processed sauce I can look at and go, I can recreate this, right? Just play with it and just have fun and see what happens, right? And worst case scenario, you make something that you go, I wouldn't serve that. I'm probably not going to make that again, right? And if you wrote it down, then you're a lot smarter than me because a lot of the time I just do it and then try and remember it. But I've been pretty lucky with that. That's neat. Do you have any tips on dehydrators? Like what's the best one and how to use it for people that have never, aren't really familiar with dehydrator? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I am a little bit old school in terms of what I find to be the best just because it is the lower tech option, but I, I just really go with the very basic nine tray Excalibur dehydrator. I personally don't even really go for like the fancy kind of upgrades with the timers or with, you know, stainless steel or anything like that. I just like the, the base model that by far is my favorite. It's the easiest to clean. It's really reliable. Uh, they last really, really long. They have consistent drying temperatures. Um, I've used some other brands, which I won't necessarily say, but others that are higher tech and more expensive and have, you know, electronic timers and stuff. And I found they're just not drying as uniform. Sometimes they're slower drying. Uh, they're more expensive. So I, I would honestly just go for the regular Excalibur and uh, even potentially, if, you know, if cost is an issue, go for the refurbished models because those are just ones that they get back for refund or for return and they fix them up and then you can get them for like an extra hundred bucks off that way. That's, That's what I think. Thanks. They're good. I mean, you don't need a dehydrator. Uh, you know, I, I think I went my first first nine or ten years raw without a dehydrator, just mostly blender and uh, cutting board and knife and my hands to mash stuff or just mash it in my face, right? But 
you know, it, it is fun, especially if you want to make pizzas or cheesy scalp potatoes or fries or whatever, right? It, it adds a lot of different tastes and textures and it's fun to play with, you know, whether you're making pancakes or crepes or cinnamon buns, it, it broadens the spectrum and it invites more people in, you know, because if you're just sitting there eating your bananas and celery, like we said, your friends might think you're crazy, but when you're sitting there munching on ice cream and cinnamon buns and having pizza, they might get down with you. Neat. So let's bust into this uh, cheesy scalp potatoes because it is the more kind of in intensive recipe here. It's going to take a little bit more time. So what we have here is about 300, a little bit more, 300 grams of zucchini. And all we're going to do is just peel it. So I'm going to peel it over the sink here. You can still see and hear me, right? Yep. Okay, so we're just going to peel it. My favorite peeler, which I actually don't have here before, maybe you've seen it before as well, is a stainless steel Titan peeler. Um, I'm in no way affiliated with them, but I love their peelers. They're just really, really great quality. And they also make a Julian peeler, which is really amazing. I'm actually probably gonna order one myself because I forgot mine back at home. But uh, I love their Julian peeler because then I could just continue with this and make like the perfect linguine, which is really nice for a lot of different, a lot of different recipes. So, Gonna peel this off here. Give it a quick little rinse. You ever notice that uh, zucchinis have a little bit of a kind of sticky film on them? It's like a silica, it's almost like silicone. And I like to rinse that off so my hands don't get quite as kind of like coated with that weirdness, right? So, what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to cut off about uh, 100 grams here. Let's see if I cut that right. That's 67. You know what's even stickier than you know what's even stickier than zucchini is jackfruit. Oh God, yes, it is. Yeah, it's that is truly latex in the in the jackfruits. Oh, we got 100 perfectly. So we're going to put that aside because that's going to be in the dressing portion. You know, a secret with jackfruit though too, is if it's really ripe, like right to the point where there might even be a soft spot coming on it, then the, uh, then the latex actually sets and then it leaks a lot less. And also the other trick with that is you take coconut oil, which I don't really, don't really recommend ingesting, but great on your hands, great on your skin and great on your hands and your knife when you're cutting jackfruit. And that way nothing sticks to you. And if anything does stick to you, same thing works. You have sticky hands from the latex, you put a little bit of coconut oil on there, rinse it off, put some soap on there, and then it just melts away, just completely melts. So what we're gonna do here, we have the rest of this zucchini, which is about 183 grams, 180 grams, 175 grams. And we're just gonna carefully cut it. You could use a, a, uh, a mandolin again on like a really thin setting if you're not really used to using a, a knife. But what we're going to do is just slice dollars here that are pretty thin. You want to get them like, oh, like pretty paper thin. And we'll just set them aside here for now. So we're going to slice this all the way down. Because, because the zucchini is not quite the same texture as a potato, you want to make it really thin so that it does get the chance to soften up in the dehydrator and become a little more similar. And what I find is if you make it too thick, then it's just, it just does kind of taste like zucchini rounds. But if you make them nice and thin and the sauce is all over them, then they taste a lot more authentic and they soften up a whole heck of a lot more. And, you know, that's one of the benefits of, uh, of dehydrating in a bit of sauce is it just really does kind of soften it. And, you know, that, that technique I mentioned with the freezing, it works the best with certain vegetables. Like it works really great with cabbage, asparagus. It actually works good with mushrooms and onions. Um, but it doesn't work good with zucchini or with carrots, I find. It kind of gives them a weird kind of rubbery texture. So uh, different vegetables for different techniques. And with zucchini, I find it's just way better to do this to put them into slices and then put them in the sauce. Do you have a, a favorite raw dish, Chef AJ? 
Oh boy. You mean like one that I make myself? Um, <laughs> you know, it's always, it always seems to be the desserts because there's something about raw desserts that are just so beautiful. They're so decadent and they, it's awesome because you can eat a bunch and not feel like, you know, like you need to sink into a couch quite as much as you would if it was like, you know, the, the normal version, whether that's like a cheesecake or, you know, pecan pie or something like that. Or, or, you know, just like, I mean, just taking like chia seeds with, with fresh or frozen fruit and blending it, and then you have jam. I mean, that's, that's raw technically. Absolutely. 110%. I, you know, I often make uh, banana handwiches. So I just take a banana, I put it in a leaf of romaine lettuce, and then I blend some dates with a little bit of say mango juice or something like that. And uh, it turns into the best jam ever and just spread that over top of the banana. And it's like, you know, if you wanted to get super intense, you could put a little bit of, uh, almond butter or something like that and make it like a peanut or a almond butter and jam banana sandwich, you know? Yep. Oh, j- uh, Sherry gave a super chat, says, thank you. Love that you have Chris on again. Thank you so oh, much, Sherry. Love you, Sherry. Yep. Awesome that you're here. That's that's uh, very humbling and awesome. She's an amazing chef herself. All right, so we have this all sliced up so you can see that we got to uh, a fair amount and some of them I kind of goofed on, but it doesn't really matter that much. So we got that already. Now we have here, let's see, we have here about 115 grams, 120 grams of mushrooms. Uh, I picked the white mushrooms, the white button mushrooms, just so that they have a similar color. You could use cremini if you want, but all we're going to do with this is very similar. We're just going to take up and put the, uh, the bell or the button side towards the knife and try to cut as many dollars off of it, or coins, whatever you want to call it, tokens, as we can. So similar, pretty thin, but the mushrooms fall apart a little easier than the zucchini, so you might need to go a little thicker, and they soften more into the hydrator anyway, so it doesn't matter. You can go a little bit thicker than than the zucchini. And once you get to this point where you end up getting a little bit of the gills and the stem, and the rest of it just kind of falls apart, I put this aside and I use that for another recipe. I, I love to just dehydrate mushrooms like that and put them in curries and chilies and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna set that aside and I'll probably use those tomorrow. But I usually find that you can get about four, three to five uh, kind of coins from each mushroom. So that's all we're gonna do is we have all these mushrooms and we're gonna slice those thin as well. And this just gives a little bit of a difference of taste and texture. So that it's not just zucchini and you know, it adds a little bit of a different kind of flavor profile uh, as well as nutrient profile. I really do like mushrooms. So we're going to put those in there and have that mixed up. I tried a whole bunch of different, a uh, whole bunch of different ingredients, trying to recreate more of a potato kind of texture. And I tell you, it is pretty hard. You know, like I tried zucchini, or sorry, I tried a uh, carrot. I tried to icon radish. I tried um, what is it called? Hickama, even tried other different kind of weirder ones, you know, celerac and stuff like that. But really what I've found anyway, is that these, these two ingredients make the absolute best combo and uh, closest resemblance. Because you could of course try to use raw potatoes, but it's just, it's just not the same. It's just, it's not really that tasty. So this way, a lot easier to digest and uh, pretty simple common ingredients and is really fun. There we go. The final countdown, we only got one more mushroom here. There we go. Now the real question is, Am I eating this holiday feast at midnight? Because it's, it's 11.30 right now here in Sweden. But luckily, I think I'm going to probably, uh, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll eat it. Maybe I'll keep it for tomorrow. I'm not sure. How's your Easter going? Are you having an Easter feast tonight? Uh, well, not yet. I've just been working all day. But uh, let's see. What do we, I, I made something. I, I, you know what? I, I did a cooking class for Chivo on Friday. So I, I made a really uh, nice loaf with, with a sauce. So I'll, I'll have a nice dinner. Awesome. Yeah. So check this out. I'll just show you. I like to come up close and personal in here sometimes, right? So here we got all those little mushroom dollars and all these zucchini dollars. And now we're going to get to the fun job of kind of assembling, or uh, not assembling them, but kind of 
putting them together in a, a nice way. So I have this little kind of kind of like a Pyrex style kind of little dish here, casserole dish. Preferably I'd like it just a little bit smaller, but we only have this size here. So I'm using this one today. And what we're gonna do is just line them up. So what I did uh, in the other dish actually, which worked a little better, and I have that one already pre-made into the hydrator, is I put two of the zucchini rounds and then I would put the uh, one mushroom round in the center. So they all kind of line up. And then I do the same thing. I just put two zucchini rounds and one mushroom in the center. And what this does is creates kind of like a uh, log house effect with a little bit of space between every single one, right? So that when we create the sauce and put the sauce on there, the sauce just runs between every single slice. And these proportions that I mentioned with the uh, amount of zucchini and the amount of mushrooms. And if anyone has any questions, if you're like, oh, I don't remember how much you said of anything, just let uh, Chef AJ know in the chat box and I'll very happily go over all the proportions in here again for you. Uh, it just really matches up pretty darn perfectly so that you end up with the right amount of sauce to mushroom to you know, zucchini to happiness kind of ratio. Because we all want that happiness ratio to be perfect, right? Yeah, you bet. How long have you lived in Sweden? You know, I, I um, just really moved here with my residency permit in February. I think it was, I think it was like the first or second of February. So it's, it's pretty fresh. I was here last, last summer uh, for three months, but that's all my visa would allow at that time. And then, uh, and then my residency permit came through. So now this is officially my home base. And, you know, with, with everything going on in the world, I don't know when I'll be leaving for travel, but, you know, in Europe, travel is pretty inexpensive and generally easy, at least throughout Europe. So we're hoping to be able to do some travel in the next while, but uh, time will tell. And if able, then the intention is to go to the Woodstock Fruit Festival this August in uh, New York State. But, uh, and if you've never been to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, it's awesome. This will be the 10th year anniversary. I feel really blessed to have been there to every single one, except for one when I was unfortunately hit by a truck um, and needed to recover in the hospital from that. I missed one year, but otherwise I've been there every single year and have been the head chef of seven out of the 10 and uh, you know, a speaker and teacher, yoga teacher. And it's just a really fun gathering of amazing people. And you know, it's just so much fun. I absolutely love it there. Okay, you were hit by a truck, like in your car or just your body? That's pretty intense. It was intense and it was, it was, really, it was really tough. It was, it was both my girlfriend, Camilla, and I. This was uh, three years ago, this August. It was on July 31st. And um, we were actually on my motorbike coming home from, uh, coming home from the gym. And we were, uh, you know, we were going through a light that had just turned yellow and a half ton truck tried to burn that light and turned left directly into us. And so the bumper hit us both on the left leg and the doctor's reports that her legs were mutilated. Oh. You know, she had fe like fever broken, everything broken, you know, and like, you know, she was in the hospital 40 days. I was in the hospital for 20 days or 11 days and had to relearn to walk and a year of rehab. And it was pretty intense, but uh, the power of raw food and perseverance and, you know, steady rehab you know, doing really, really well and back to skateboarding and having a lot of fun. And it's uh, awesome. Well, I am so sorry. That's, you're like literally the third person I know now that's been hit by a truck. That's not the funnest ordeal, but, uh, you know, everything is time and place. You know, I, I half jokingly, but with, with seriousness as well, say that uh, I was wishing for some time off. I was, had been so busy for so many years in a row. And I was like, all I mm -hmm. want to do is just, spend a couple of months and just watch all the Star Trek, the next generations, you know, and then the universe delivered. They're like, guess what? You just chill out and watch all those Star Treks. <laughs> so I, I did that. And I also um, furthered my education by taking Dr. Rick and Karen Dina's uh, raw food educators course. And, you know, it was really, really great doing that as well. And uh, yeah, you know, mixed, mixed blessings. I, I wouldn't choose it, 
but uh, I did grow a lot through it. And, you know, we grew a lot together through it and it changed my trajectory. You know, I was going to be going to all these festivals and she's going to be going, you never know what would have happened. Right. And I feel really blessed what has happened. So that's kind of what's gone on. Wow. So glad you're here. Hey, question. If you took your kitties with you to Sweden. Oh, who's asking that? Infinite love and gratitude. Oh, uh, let's see. Infinite love and gratitude. I wish that I could say I did bring Dee Dee and Dottie with me from Sweden, but we do have FaceTimes all the time. My mom puts them on the phone for us and they go crazy when they hear my voice. But we did adopt uh, our own two kitties here. One's name is Kitty and the other one's name is Leo. And they are both adorable, super great kitties. And we're in the process of toilet training them. So we're using the litter quitter and they're actually using the toilet now and going to the bathroom on it. And if you follow me on uh, Instagram at, at the Rod Vantage, then you can see me doing my day of life all the time and you know all that fun stuff. I share the kitties a lot. I'm basically like raw food, kitties, and skateboarding, and then just kind of being a bit of a jackass. That's that's me in a nutshell. So if you want some kitty time, come join me on uh, on Instagram. Wow. So check this out. We have that. Uh, I'll bring it kind of close. I didn't do it quite as pretty as I would. If I was presenting it, but it's, uh, I guess I am presenting it, but it's kind of looks kind of nice here. And you can see there's a little gaps between everything. We have that all, all made there. Oh, I have one thicker slice here, which we'll just throw in there for good measure. And now we're going to get onto the sauce. So with the sauce, we have that hundred grams of zucchini. And all we're going to do is just give it a rough chop. It's already been peeled. To do, to do. Give it a rough chop and we'll put it into the Vitamix. You could use, again, any other kind of smaller, powerful blender. That's all good. A little rough chop. I find zucchini is one of the best ways to stretch a fatty sauce to make it, you know, really nice and creamy, but not have it just be pure fat, right? Which tastes great, but I feel better when I have it a little bit lower. So we have that there, the 100 grams of zucchini, which was left over from the, the slicing. And then here we have 75 grams of uh, celery, which is about one and a half celery stalks. That is 0.16 pounds. If you're not used to the conversion. And like I said, yeah, if anyone needs a reminder of any of the ingredients, just let me know. Putting that in there. And then we have here, which you can't see because it's a bowl and it's not see-through. What we have here is one third cup of cashews. Now, I don't use cashews a ton. They are amazingly delicious, but they're a little bit harder to uh, digest than some of the other nuts. They're often a little more expensive, but they're one of the few nuts that doesn't brown when it's in the dehydrator. Uh, macadamia nuts actually work well as well for this recipe. But if you try and do it with, say, hemp seeds, which I prefer hemp, that's one of my favorite nuts ever, but it just turns brown. And, you know, you don't want a cheesy uh, scalloped potato that's just like black, you know, and same thing with like sunflower seeds, it just oxidizes. But these ones, the uh, cashews, as well as the mac nuts, I believe it's the fat content, so higher fat, it uh, insulates and causes less oxidization, so they don't turn as brown. So we have the, the one third cup and then I soaked the one third cup. So it's not a third cup soaked, it's a third cup before being soaked, which is about 50 grams. So we have that. We have uh, just 20 grams of yellow onion, which again, you could use uh, a milder onion if you like. You could use like a, a Maui sweet, or you could use green onion bottoms. You know, I used to only use green onions, uh, but I do now actually just like to use white onions and sometimes red onions for cost and ease and storability because the uh the green onions they tend to go bad faster and you want to put them in the fridge whereas these you can just have a basket right and i just use a little accent anyway so putting that in there for 20 grams and then here we have two tablespoons of lemon juice so that again is about one lemon so we're putting that in there and one clove of garlic which with the powerful vitamix i don't even need to peel off if you want you can peel that skin off but it's not going to matter too much. And then if I can find it, doo -doo -doo. where did I put that one? Oh, there we go. I'm going to put in 
four tablespoons of water. So it's just four tablespoons of water. I don't normally use water in my recipes if I can avoid it. But I tried a bunch of different stuff and nothing worked quite as well. I think that was four, so let's do that. Tried doing celery juice, tried doing carrot juice, and they just didn't make the same taste. In broths, I usually like to use vegetable juices instead because water, what does it do? It waters things down, right? It kind of waters down the flavor. But in this instance, because we're getting dehydrated, it doesn't matter at all and it works perfectly. So we have that. And then last, and I will admit on air, embarrassingly, red cheeks and all that in the book, which I just released into the bundle, I forgot to add this ingredient to the recipe. So I'm gonna be updating that tomorrow and then sending that into the bundle and notifying everyone to re-upload the new book that has this recipe ingredient, which makes a big difference. We have two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, which again is a, a hazy ingredient for some raw fruits. You can omit it, but if you do wanna include it, if you want it to be more kind of like a holiday feast that you share with a bunch of people, an occasional dish, or you just like it and don't care, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. So all we're gonna do is put the lid on that if we have it, which we do. And we're gonna blend that up. We may need to tamper, but we may not, we'll see. And let's go for it. So always nice to start low. Oh, you got it. There we go. Now, something really neat, which I don't know if you've ever really played with. Have you ever played with or talked or like been told about or checked out vacuum blenders before? <laughs> no. There is sounds absurd. I have one back here, which I, I probably could have used, but I wasn't hundred percent certain. But this is a, a really inexpensive vacuum blender, but you can actually get like vacuum blenders through Blendtec now. And I'm hoping soon that Vitamix will make a uh, vacuum blender. And again, it sounds kind of like, you know, like phony space age weirdness, but vacuum blending is amazing. You know, it, it sucks a large percent of the, a large percent of the oxygen out of the container. And what that does is it preserves the uh, antioxidant quantity in the food. And you would not believe it, but if you do a taste test side by side, not only does it taste way better, but the texture is way better and the color is way better. Like it, it blows you away. It's one of those things that once you try it, obviously I still use the Vitamix and I, I do both. But once you try it, you, you really do end up wanting to vector to using the vacuum blender a lot more. Um, I, and I, I could use that. Where do you get the vacuum blender? I've heard of it, but I've never actually seen one be used. Well, you know, I actually just got this one, which is a random company. And the last one I got was a random company. Um, nothing that I can vouch for the, the longstanding use of. But I just went on Amazon, unfortunately, at the time. And I looked for vacuum blender and looked at the reviews and I picked the best one that was like 120 bucks. And, uh, and the first one I had was called the Flex Ion. They, since I haven't been able to see them, but I used that for over a year back home. I brought that out here and I plugged it in using a converter that didn't convert the electrical outage and it burnt out. So then I just bought this one for like a hundred bucks on the Swedish Amazon and uh, it works really darn good. So that's, that's not bad just for a basic one to try it out. But like I said, Blendtec actually has one that is more expensive for sure, but that's like the top, top of the line. And it's not super new. Like they've been around in Japan for a long time, but they're only starting to really come out to the West more and become more and more recognized. So I'd imagine in the next coming years, it's going to be much more cheap. You know, it's going to become more accessible and less expensive. And something that's really fun, I actually put a video up on my YouTube channel, um, which is also the raw advantage. I have over 800 reps or 800 videos on there, like over 100 recipes, tons of stuff. I've been doing a recipe a week for the last 12 years. Um, I did a recipe on a do-it-yourself conversion kit to make your Vitamix into a uh, vacuum blender. And so all I did is I took a tub stopper, just like a $5 tub stopper from any hardware store. And I drilled a hole on the top and I bought a wine pump kit, which is just used to pump the oxygen or wine to keep them longer. And that comes with the pump. And so it just works on a standard Vitamix. 
And I just put that on there like that, make sure the lid is really sealed. One cup caveat there, I found some Vitamix lids seal better than others. So if you're unfortunately having a Vitamix lid that doesn't seal super good, you may have to kind of jerry rig it with some kind of like electrical tape or a bead of some sealant, which is unfortunate. But most of the lids I've used actually do work. And then you can accomplish a similar thing. It doesn't quite do quite as good as the actual uh, vacuum blenders. But all you do is you just pump it up before you blend. And as you can see, it's just like that. And when you're done, you pop it off. And it is wild. I've also done some videos comparing a actual vacuum blender with the Vitamix. And you can see it also like the Vitamix whips air into it. It's really powerful. So it actually makes a more frothy kind of a, uh, just frothy feeling uh, texture. Whereas the vacuum blender really makes it more liquidy and you can create more separation when it's frothy like that because the fiber and the water kind of separate a little bit more. So it's just kind of a neat little thing, which again, isn't like going to make or break in your diet, but if you're, if you're uh, interested in it, it's something I encourage checking out because it, it blows away most people when they actually try it. It's pretty freaking crazy. I would love to find a place where I could try it. You know, I, back in the day when when you now you can't demo food anymore, but Costco used to demo the Vitamix and the Blendtec, and you could try that because that sounds really interesting. People are asking what the name of the blender that you bought that was air. What, what do you call them? Airtight blenders or a vacuum blender? Yeah, vacuum blender. So again, like. The one that I have behind me, I had never heard of this brand. I've never seen it. I, I've only had this for a month, so I don't want anyone thinking that I'm like saying this is the best one by any means, right? This one was called like a uh, some. Do you know this cooking tech? It's, it's like a cooking technique where you yes, sous vide. Your sous -vide. Food. So you V I D. Yeah, sous vide. Exactly. That's what that's called. It's called sous vide. I've never heard of that before, but it's called a sous vide vacuum blender. Um, but I've seen on like American and Canadian uh, uh, Amazon, like I've seen Greenus, I've seen Flex Zion. I mean, what I would recommend doing is just go on Amazon or, or anything like that and just type in vacuum blender and look at the reviews and see what there are. And for like 100, 150 bucks, you can get a pretty fun one to try out that maybe will last you six months, maybe it'll last you two years, but it's kind of neat. And what I'm thinking is by that time in the next year, two, three years, we're going to get it way more reliably from places like Vitamix. And if you want to splurge, you can probably get a Blendtec one. Um, I know John Kohler. Do you know John Kohler? I, you know, I don't know him personally, but I've, I, he's the reason that I bought the Nutramil because I watched his unbiased <laughs> review. I, and I've met him, I think, at trade shows, but years ago. But I wouldn't say he knows me, but I, I like his work very much. John Kohler is awesome. He's a good friend. I've met him through all the raw food festivals and fun stuff like that. But he's the guy that turned me on to the vacuum blenders. And he does amazing review videos he'd be awesome on your show making yeah, i was just gonna say if you could please introduce me i'd love to because he is the reason that i went with the nutra milk over any other machine because i really trusted his review so thank you you know i think if you're going to have a vacuum blender it should also vacuum your house just to that would be that would be awesome if it could do that yeah <laughs> and maybe do the suck cuts vacuum suck your cut your hair just like on uh, wayne's world that'd be awesome that's but uh but he actually, he does awesome reviews and he's the one he did recently did a review on the uh, blend tech attachment where you could actually put the blend tech vacuum attachment on a Vitamix base or on blend tech base. And they sold out immediately. I wanted to buy one and they were, they were expensive. They were, I think like, I think they were $300 just for the, the container with the vacuum attachment, but they sold out instantly. So they're off the market right now, but those will be coming back. And you can get some vacuum containers and vacuum blenders off of his site, um, discountjuicers.com, which I don't have an affiliate with, but he is just a great guy and he has a lot of kitchen equipment there. Nice. Here's somebody so, watching named yeah. Siobhan who says, uh, where, did he, where did he go? The Banana Commander. I haven't heard him in so long. Hope he's doing well. Is he still all raw? That's me. That's absolutely me. Yeah, I'm the Banana Commander. I got the uh, banana mustache tattoo. If you can see that, or if you need me to get closer, I can show you guys. You want to see it going on? That's very yeah, I got, I got a little banana mustache going on here. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I often say that I'm 100% raw 99% of the time because I do have some peas that are frozen peas, which are technically blanched. And I do use some uh, uh, spices and stuff, which who knows the temperature they dehydrate them at. But the vast majority of the time, I'm just eating fruits and vegetables and, you know, a little bit of nuts and seeds and all that fun stuff. And I'm, I'm doing great. You know, this will be my 17th year raw foodist. And you know, I've been into health since uh, 98, 99. I haven't had a sick day since I was in grade 11 in 97. 
96, you know, so doing pretty good, enjoying it, love spreading this, and happy to be here bringing this spring feast. So all we're going to do is pour this cheese, this cheese on top here. Try and get it on all the corners. This also is a really nice cheese that can work on like noodles, kind of like a, a little bit like an Alfredo style. You know, you could add any kind of herb to it. My mom likes dill in her scalloped potatoes. Some people might like some tarragon or something if they're making it into a, into a fettuccine, fettuccine. Where did that spatula go? Oh, there you are. Well, it's a little bit dainty, but let's just get that in there. Try and get all that in there. Waste not, want not. When I showed my girlfriend Camilla this, she's also a raw food chef and uh, a vegan chef. And she's on Camilla's Yoga Kitchen on Instagram. And she's a part of the bundle. She actually created her first book, uh, Raw Sweets and Treats, in there. And uh, you know, so when I shared this recipe with her, she was like, oh, my God. She just wanted to drink the cheese sauce itself. We're just going to loosely spread that on there. Make sure we get it on all the corners. We're going to shake it up a little bit, make sure it goes in between every one. If you want, you could be a little bit neurotic and kind of you know, space out some of these guys a little bit. But with the finished, finished dish, I'll show you something that's really perfect and neat. This one, because it's a little wider, it doesn't quite sink in between every slice quite as easy. And you might even kind of want to do this, kind of separate them and shake them a little bit. But there we go. There we have the potatoes, and what we'll do is slide them into the hydrator. Oh my. But this other dish, because it was a little bit skinnier this way, when I did the three, the zucchini, zucchini, mushroom, they really did kind of create that space in between. And it just, you know, like, there's, there's that sauce in between every single piece. So this right here is the finished product. Um, it's nice and warm, it's really cheesy. I wish you guys could smell it. I'm sorry that you can't. I wish you guys could taste it, but I'm sorry it'll probably take till tomorrow for you to make it. But that is one there, the cheesy scalp potatoes. Here we have the sweet red slaw. And right here, we have the beautiful lemon garlic asparagus, which hopefully, yeah, you can actually see they're you know, nice and soft. Mm. Well, you're gonna have a great dinner in the middle of the night. I wish, I wish I could share this with you guys right now, but it's so tender. You could serve this to someone, they would have no clue that it's a raw food dish, no word of a lie. Just don't show them the dehydrator. And you can couple these up together, serve them up on one big plate for yourself or divide them between two plates and voila. You have a delicious spring feast that is really fun to make and uh, seasonal and super fresh and tasty. And, you know, between the cashews and the hemp, pretty low fat. And just a pleasure to make and share with you guys. Well, thank you so much. Any last words on this bundle? I hope I hope you guys are at least clicking the link to check out all these amazing resources you get. I mean, just the burger book and the ice cream book. I'll tell you, you know, those are those are like a hundred bucks if you buy them separate. And there's like sixty books. It's it's incredible. And oh, they get the they get the conference, the Ultimate Weight Loss Conference that we did a couple of years ago, our last live conference before the pandemic. Exactly, which is, uh, I believe, uh, four interviews over an hour to an hour and a half each interview, right? Yep, yep. With it, and it's not, it's not like they can see them anywhere on YouTube because these are these are conference interviews. Yeah, so this was from yeah, a lot of conference. exclusive from that to the books. You know, the books aren't available anywhere else yet. And if you wait and you like one of the books, you're going to be paying anywhere from ten to forty bucks per book by, by itself, singly. Uh, beyond that, too, there are I think four or five courses on there. There's a full ETF course. 
uh, emotional freedom technique tapping course. There's a, uh, a chefing course actually, which teaches you knife skills and a whole bunch of different techniques to bring your raw food chefing and just chefing in general from a professional chef up to the next level. Um, there's even a $300 course on how to turn your passion into a business, you know, really kind of create a, a, create a niche for yourself in the vegan movement with, you know, online courses and books and all that kind of stuff, social media. So there's a lot of information and there's just tons of also just like lifestyle information and tips and tricks to really live a healthful lifestyle from some of the biggest names and educators. You know, we've got like Dr. Rick and Karen Dina in there. We've got Don Bennett in there. We've got uh, Eris Latham in there. If you know him, he's amazing and been in the scene since the late eighties, I believe. And, you know, he's got his book just updated going into the bundle. And yeah, it's, it's a really great gathering of really heart centered, compassionate people who want to bring forth the information and recipes that have changed their lives and bring it out to the rest of the world. Cause feeling this good isn't meant to be done alone. And we want to share that with everyone. So really do hope you guys check out that bundle. It's, it's a ridiculous deal. And I'm only hammering on because honestly, I don't know anyone who would get it and be anything but blown away and have so much fun with it for weeks, months, years, and decades to come. If you, if you could even get through it by then. Yeah, it could take a long time. I mean, it could become a full-time job just going through all the recipe books if you want, right? Like there's endless recipes to try and anything you could think of. Yeah, like it's insane. The ice creams and- Yeah, like yeah. I said, the ice cream book and the burger book, they just, I'm like, wow. The end. That's I, tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is tomorrow, Actually, yeah, guys, tomorrow at 2 p.m. I have a bonus show with the authors of those two books that just blew me away from this bundle. And, and like I said, the books were $42 on Amazon. So for like $6 more than the price of one book, you get 60 books and courses. One of them had a cute name, Nuts About No Nuts. I like that title. Yes, yeah, that's my good friend John's. And it's fun. It is totally nut free. And it's fun because like I said, it really ranges. The books range from like super simple recipes that are one to five ingredients just fruits and greens and then you got like onion rings and burgers and lasagnas there's like a meatloaf lasagna and french fries with dips and like like anything you could really think of like i have a, a deluxe banana split in mine and you know there's crepes and everything you can think of Denise says, do you get a link to download or how does it work can we access it more than once yeah my understanding is you download everything yeah, the way it works is kind of cool because we, we teamed up with this company called Send Owl and uh, you, once you purchase, you get a download link and that's like your, your portal. So you use that link and you can open that link. Actually, I, don't, I think you can open it as many times as you want. But you can download each book off of there 10 times just in case you lose your phone or whatever, right? Like we wanted to make sure that everyone gets them and reduce customer service to have to like go back in and send stuff, you know, just make it real easy for everyone. So you can download it to your phone, to your iPad, to your computer, to a, a backup device. Right. And uh, I, I don't remember if it's for a month or if it's for like three months, but it's definitely a, a long period of time to be able to download all of those resources. Yeah, and if you ever have a problem, you can email us and we'll be able to get you it download it. Then it's yours. Exactly. That's the thing. Right. You know, cause what has happened? I've been a part of some bundles and stuff and, and some people don't realize that you have to download it. They just open it and think that, oh, I'll just go to this link, open it and view it there. And then all of a sudden they've done their five times, which is pretty common for a lot of uh, book sales and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden they're emailing saying, where's my book? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I can't get it anymore. And it's like, no, you just have to download it. But we're, we're giving 10 downloads just to make that even easier. Yeah. Lori says that you make a ridiculous pizza recipe that you perfected. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, you know, I, I'm known as the pizza guy. Uh, I have a book called Frickin' Raw Some Pizzas, and it's over 18 raw vegan pizzas that I swear to you taste as good as any cooked, ve or cooked vegan pizza I've ever had, uh, ranging from like buffalo chicken wing pizzas to like cheesy veggie pizzas to Philly cheese pizzas to nacho pizzas. And the thing that I'm really the most proud of is the crusts because I created crusts that are really thin, kind of bread tasting and feeling crusts that are easy and inexpensive to make. So that isn't in the bundle. That is on my website, therawadvantage.com. Uh, I've been doing this full time for almost 12 years now, and I have nine recipe books. And this shirt, for example, is one of my designs. Peace, love, and seasonal fruit is one of my calling cards. It's the end of every single email I ever put out there. And uh, I just love to share it all there, whether it's lifestyle tips and information. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist, raw food lifestyle coach and chef. So 
I just share it with in every single way I possibly can and help people to achieve higher heights, whether it's in terms of health or athletics or just uh, enjoying more tasty raw food. It's my pleasure. You still skateboarding? Absolutely. I was just out there yesterday and I'm uh, becoming a uh, trying to do vert skateboarding, which is those really big ramps, you know, like 12 plus foot high ramps and trying to fly up in the air and stuff. And I love to jump down stuff and yeah. 41 this this summer, but I'm hoping to put out the best video part of my life. I've been a competitive amateur since I was 20. And uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm a competitive amateur anymore, but I'm competitive against myself. And it's been one of my biggest passions. And it's what got me into raw food really is wanting to perform better and heal faster. I was falling apart because I was, you know, just drinking and smoking and eating really crappy food. And then I found health and yoga and uh, my entire life changed. So I'm still doing it driving force. I love it. And, uh, it's a good way to meet a lot of people too. It's like raw food family, skateboard family, family. Are any of the other skateboarders raw foodists? Yeah. You know, it's really fun. And it's kind of funny because one of the first times I ever came to Sweden was because my good friend, Matthias, uh, he came on one of my raw retreats in Costa Rica. I've been doing retreats out there for the last decade as well. And he came out. And then, you know, when I came down for the Denmark fruit festival eight years ago, maybe, uh, he said, Hey, Chris, I live in Malmo. You've got to come over, check me out. So I came over and stayed with him for two weeks. And then uh, two years later, when I came to another Denmark fruit festival and, a, and also a Swedish fruit festival, I was invited to Stockholm to meet another friend who's a raw foodist, Michelle. He's actually in the bundle as well. He has a book uh, called Wealth is the Real Health and um, or Health is the Real Wealth, other way around. And he, uh, he's a raw food skateboarder too. Both of them have a little bit of cooked foods here and there, but for the most part, you know, like, uh, like we said before, you know, they're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and absolutely love it. And, uh, so they're my two skate friends that also are raw foodists. And it's cool because since I've been doing this for a long time, I meet more and more raw foodists that are skateboarders or just skateboarders who are more interested in eating healthier so they can last longer and skate more and heal better. Cause it's just too fun. It's not something you want to give up. Once you give up the things you love then you start to kind of, you know, kind of slowly coast downhill. And most of us don't want to coast downhill, you know? Right. Siobhan says, do you plan on hosting the surf skate retreat at the farm of life? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I took this year off just because of what's kind of going on me moving out here and all that stuff. But my next retreat is planned for 2022, um, probably either the end of February or early March. And once I have those dates set, I will be putting it up on my website and I will let everyone here know that if you go to my website, therodvantage.com, there's the retreat tab and you can sign up there for early bird pricing. And so when I actually get the firm dates, I'll send it out and you can get a good discount to be the first people to join in probably by summer or fall. Wow. Uh, Lily says, does the bundle only include raw recipes? I think the recipes are raw, but there's books that are not um, just recipe books. Like there's an EFT book by a doctor, tapping book, and other yep. types of courses that are just not, and like my content's not raw. It's, it's videos from a conference that you can't get anywhere else because you would have had to go to yeah. a conference. Exactly. Yeah. Probably the majority, like 85% is recipe based, like either recipes or meal guides or meal plans. But then there's also, yeah, like journaling books and there's, you know, books that are just about holistic lifestyle, not really specific to raw food. There's like commonly asked questions and answers and, you know, some of them from doctors, you know, Dr. Rick and Karen Dina, they've been in the raw food scene for a long time, 30 years raw food between each of them actually. So 60 years between them, uh, they're both doctors of chiropractic and, uh, you know, they, they hold their uh, raw food education course, but they have their book called Our Top 30 for 30 which is their top 30 tips for, you know, what they've learned over the last 30 years as raw foodists. So tons of education. So if you're looking for awesome recipes, as well as sound education from well-established long-termers to really learn how to thrive on a raw food diet, or just add more in a really helpful way, this is, this is the best, best resource for a raw food starter kit or raw curious starter kit or a gift for anyone else that you can possibly see. I, I honestly dare say it's the best that's ever put out there for the raw food movement. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Susan says, glad to see Chris. Are you all healed from your surgeries? Oh, thank you. Yeah. You know, I would say I'm like 98, 99. And it's kind of funny because in some ways I'm better than I was before, but there is still a little bit of creeping pains occasionally in my one ankle and in my one knee. Um, but they're kind of on and off. And, you know, a, a decade ago, I fractured actually more than that. I think 12 years ago now um, I fractured my back. 
And it had been painful on and off for a number of years. And I actually thought I'd have to kind of quit skateboarding for a short period of time. But since this accident, and because I really got consistent with going to the gym and doing some really great kind of uh, basic structural exercises like squats and deadlifts and all those kinds of things, my back is way better. Like it's almost completely brand new. And it's pretty cool because when I originally bro- uh, fractured my back, it was a, comp- a comp- compression fracture, which actually smooshed one of my vertebrae into like a triangle. They're supposed to be flat. I squished it. And I got x-rays of that showing it was squished. And then three years later, I went to another chiropractor back home in Saskatoon because the first one is in Vancouver. And uh, he ordered a second set of x-rays and the bone had grown back and was flat again. And he said in his career, he had never seen that. Now, the, the only caveat there is that it was his first month as a chiropractor. But, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. He was a, a well-established chiropractor and he had never heard of that. Um, definitely not trying to say that it's a heal all cure all for everything. But I've healed very well from very serious injuries that would have kept people away from a skateboard or from fitness and health. And uh, I attribute it to healthy, low fat, raw food diet and positive mentality and just a a never give up kind of attitude that I want to enjoy this as high as I can. Right. Yep. Monica says, can I get the bundle in in Europe? Why not? It's virtual. Absolutely. You can get it anywhere in the world. Uh, All of the books that are in there are PDF, except for ones in EPUB. And that EPUB can be read on like a Kindle e-reader or anything like that, which is a free app. But uh, yeah, you can, you can download it from anywhere in the world. And it's super simple. We accept PayPal and Stripe. So you can use credit card or your PayPal account. And uh, yeah. What's the uh, vegan scene in general like in Sweden and the raw food scene in particular? It's awesome. You know, it's crazy. Like when I first started coming out here eight years ago, I was blown away because you'd go into a general regular supermarket and there'd be like sections that said like vegan, like it like in like signs, vegan, you know, like, um, you know, they have whole freezer sections with all vegan stuff. And like, that was way ahead of the, the, the curve, at least from where I was in Canada, maybe not ahead of like LA or something, but ahead of a lot of places. And, you know, the percentage of vegans in Europe and, you know, Sweden area and stuff like that is pretty high. There's a lot of vegan restaurants. There's a few raw vegan restaurants, not a ton, but there are a few. And there is some little raw food groups here. You know, we've had raw food potlucks in years past and, you know, yoga classes where we all bring food, as I usually call them fruit lucks, where we just bring fruit and just eat together and play in the sun in the summer. And there's usually anywhere from like 10 to 30 people that show up, you know, not necessarily saying all of them are strict raw foodists, but people that love raw food, love to share and love good company and healthful kind of living, you know, so it's a really good scene out here. Wow. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. This was just a wonderful presentation and thanks for putting together that bundle. It looks amazing. Such a pleasure. Thanks so much for inviting me on and thanks to everyone who asked some questions and joined us here. And I really do hope you guys check it out. And the last thing I will say too, is there's a lot of people who are in the bundle. If you know someone in the bundle and you want to give them extra love, check them out because all the affiliates have their own links and you can give them extra love by going through them. So there's a lot of people there. Um, so check them all out. You know, we're all on Instagram. We're all over the place, just sharing this and wanting to spread the message and share each other so we can raise each other up. That's right. Right before we logged on, I was watching an Instagram live with Nate Maris and Chef Ocean. They were making ice cream, which he's going to make tomorrow. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. You know, I I think we're going to be probably making some ice cream pretty soon. We got some frozen bananas going on and I think Camilla's got something up her sleeve for a future uh, Instagram stories coming. Maybe she'll come on the show sometime. Yeah, I'll I'll ask her. That'd be awesome. That'd be great. Well, thanks so much, Chris. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. If you like demos, whether they're cooked or raw, come back tomorrow for two shows. At the regular time of 11 a.m., I have the wonderful pastry chef, Fran Cossigan, who's going to be making an incredible parfait with a nice cream. And then at 2 p.m., we have Nate and Melissa Maris, and they're going to be making recipes from their extraordinary raw food cookbooks, a burger and more ice cream. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter, Chris. Take care.